Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this video, we're going to explore MQTT. We'll start by figuring out what the hell MQTT is and why it's useful in a home automation context. And then we're going to take a look at a way that we can actually use it. So let's get started. In a world full of acronyms that no one can remember, MQTT is another that might just get lost in your head. But it is actually pretty handy in the context of home automation. So what is it? Well, MQTT stands for MQ Telemetry Transport or Message Queuing Telemetry Transport. And it was originally designed for machine to machine telemetry in around 1999 for connecting oil and gas pipeline telemetry systems over satellite. In these environments, they needed something lightweight to gather the telemetry data without saturating that low bandwidth satellite data link. MQTT has fast become one of the key protocols in IoT deployments and is even supported by default in some commercial home automation gadgets. It uses a methodology called Publish and Subscribe or PubSub which is what allows the messaging to be so lightweight. A useful analogy here is TV or radio. A broadcaster broadcasts their program using a specific channel and an interested person tunes into that channel to view the broadcast. There's no need for direct connection between the broadcaster and the receiver. The receiver just tunes into what they're interested in. In MQTT, a publisher publishes messages on a topic and a subscriber needs to subscribe to that topic to then receive those messages. And this also means that multiple subscribers can perform actions on a single topic publication and they don't necessarily have to be the same action. It also allows for two-way communication. So a device can both be a subscriber to a message but it can also be a publisher. MQTT does use a central broker in order to publish these messages for the various subscribers to then receive. And we can install that broker on our Raspberry Pi, which we've done already in the video about add-ons and customizations, but I won't be using that particular broker in this video. If you haven't already done so, pop over to the add-on saw in the supervisor and make sure you install an MQTT broker. I particularly like Mosquito, if we can find it in here. There it is right there, the Mosquito Broker. An app that we'll find helpful during this video to take a look at what MQTT actually is, is MQTT Explorer. It's pretty handy for troubleshooting as well. So if you're going to be playing around with MQTT a lot, I'd recommend getting something like MQTT Explorer and I'll drop a link to MQTT Explorer in the description below. It's available for Windows, Mac, Ubuntu and other Linux distributions. So it should be pretty good for all of you out there. Now I say that MQTT can be pretty useful in a home automation context because a lot of companies now are producing devices that include MQTT protocols because of how easy they are to integrate. My garage at garage door opener, for example, is one example of that. Because of how easy MQTT is, it's also great for DIY projects like this LED ring light here. And we'll take a closer look at this a little later on in the video, uh, but we'll also do a separate video on this particular project. So in order to dive in properly, we need to make sure that our Home Assistant is set up with a configuration to connect to our MQTT broker. So we'll take a look at the integrations in our configuration here, and we need to make sure that we've got MQTT here. If you don't have it, you can add the integration, but we can also check the configuration to make sure that we are connecting to the correct server with the username and password that we need. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pop over to MQTT Explorer. And when we first open up MQTT Explorer, 
we should get this screen that asks us to connect to our MQTT broker. Now there's some interesting stuff in either the eclipse.org or the test.mosquito.org. The um, eclipse.org one actually includes the current uh, on-screen on subtitles for the BBC, which I thought was quite interesting. What I'll do, we'll uh, click on this plus button next to connections and we'll create our new connection. I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this home mosquito and we will not change any of those. Protocol MQTT. Now I've got my MQTT broker running in a Docker container on my server. So I'm going to put in the host name of, or the IP address of my uh, Docker host. Um, and we always connect using port 1883. That's the port for MQTT. You would probably, if you've installed your MQTT broker, uh, for example, the Mosquito broker we mentioned before, on your Raspberry Pi, you would just put in the host of your Raspberry Pi. I'm going to type in the username and password for my broker in here and then click connect. Now, straight away, I'm just gonna take this full screen, but straight away you can see that we have over on this left-hand side, we're looking at the particular broker that we're exploring and we've got these topics and then we've got some subtopics underneath these. So I'm going to take a quick look at the garage it, and you can see that we've got the status of the garage it instance. And if we click on this status, topic here, we can then actually see the raw JSON or JavaScript object notation over here. And then we've got the config and we can see some information about the configuration of it. Uh, for example, the name uh, and uh, the mosquito IP, etc. What I am going to take a look, a closer look at is in the LED section, this test LED, which is this uh, LED ring that I have over here. Now, if we click back on this, uh, back on here, we should then see uh, we've got some information over here. And uh, at the moment we have a state of on, we have the color is zero red, zero green, and 255 blue. So 255 is the highest value here. We're looking at eight bit numbers. Uh, and then we've got a white value of zero as well because these are RGB and W LEDs on this particular ring. Uh, and we've got our brightness set to 255. Our transition is set to one and our effect is fade in and out. So those are all of the states on in MQTT that we've got. And that's telemetry data that's being sent back from the, uh, the controller that's controlling our LED ring light here. What I can do here, and I've set up this LED ring in my production Home Assistant interface, if I change some details here, so let's change the value to red, and you'll see that we've got the, um, in red it shows the what's gone away, and then in green it's got, it shows what's new. So it's changed around to 255 in the R value and zero in the B value. And we can also do things like changing the effect. So let's just go to solid um, and we've got solid there and maybe we will change the brightness down there as well. Okay, so that's pretty cool. We can see the data that's flying around our network. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this copy to clipboard and then I'm going to scroll down here to this publish section. I'm going to paste in here. Then I'm going to click this format JSON button. And what I want to do in this topic is I want to add a slash and then set because the controller board here is looking at a different topic when we're changing the values. So what I'm going to do is change some values here. I'm going to change the red to zero. I'm going to change the white value to 255 and I'm going to change the brightness. I'm going to set that to uh, 63 uh, just for fun. I'm going to change this transition to 500 and I'm going to change the effect to solid. And then I'm going to hit publish. 
So what we should see is that this is now fading slowly through pink to white at a brightness value of 63. Now I'm not sure how well that's coming through on the secondary camera here, but I can tell you it has gone from red to white and it's not at full uh, brightness. If I go to full brightness, so I'll add the brightness to 255, press that, and you know, over the course of 500 milliseconds, this is going to ramp up. Okay, so that is sending MQTT from MQTT Explorer. Now let's take a look at how this is going to work in Home Assistant. So uh, I've already mounted Home Assistant uh, using the SMB share and I've opened the configuration.yaml file into Visual Studio Code. Now I'm doing a couple of tricks here. One thing that I'm doing here is I've added this light uh, domain here and then I'm using an include inside my YAML here and pointing to a separate file which is ledring.yaml. And so over here if we take a look at the ledring.yaml all we're actually doing with this include is when Home Assistant gets to this part of the uh, this part of the file it reads from top to bottom when it reads this part of the file it quickly then goes over and imports this file and then continues along. I'm going to click on this LED ring.yaml file and we're going to take a look at what we've got in here. Now it should be fairly self-explanatory. We take a look here we've got the platform that we're looking at is MQTT fairly obviously or not. We're also then looking at a name so I've called this LED ring we're using a schema of JSON, so I mentioned before, JavaScript object notation. Um, and if we go back over here, this is that JSON that we're looking at. Back over here, we've got a state topic. So this is the topic that Home Assistant will listen to to determine the state of the device. So, um, and we'll take a look at the state when we go back to Home Assistant. And then we've got the command topic. So when we were back over here, we changed, we added this slash set, and that is specifically um, the topic that we need to publish to in order for these to take effect. If I were to just um, publish to the uh, LED slash test topic, nothing would happen. So I'm going to remove the white value. I'm just going to publish that because the white is a little bit um, bright. So I'm just going to bring that back to um, red, um, which is not quite as intense on this particular LED strip. So then after we've got our state and command topics, um, we've got some settings that we need to put in for Home Assistant um, to affect the way it displays in our Home Assistant interface. So the first thing here is the effect, and that allows us to have a drop down full of these effect list. We've then got the brightness, which we've set to true, and that just gives us a slider for the brightness of the LED strip that we're, we're playing with here. We've also got an RGB, which we've set to true, which gives us an RGB color wheel picker. And we've then got the white value, which also gives us a slider for the white value of our uh, RGB strip. These last two items in here are specific to MQTT. We've got optimistic and we've set that to false. What optimistic means if you set that to true, it will just assume that when you send an MQTT command, that the device at the other end has received it and actioned it. If it's set to false, it waits for an acknowledgement that it's been actioned. This QoS row here is quality of service and there's three different levels of quality of service in the MQTT specification. Zero is the setting for at most once. And it's kind of this idea of fire and forget. It sends the command out and it's not super fast if the other end receives it or not. If we were to set this value to one, that is 
a slightly more robust section because it actually then requires an acknowledgement that the other end has received the command. The last item in here is the quality of service of two, and this is the most robust in terms of quality of service. Uh, it's pretty much guaranteed with this quality of service of two that the device will receive the message and it will receive it only once. Whereas if we were to set this to one, you can actually send the, the message multiple times, but it will only send an acknowledgement back once. We're going to leave this on zero for now. Now, I've already saved this and uh, verified my configuration files using Home Assistant. You've seen me do that a dozen times already, and I've already restarted Home Assistant. If I scroll down, we should have this light section here, and you'll see we've got the LED ring. If I click on the icon, we see now that we have the RGB wheel, so that's this RGB true, we've got the white value, which is the white value true. We've also got the brightness slider, and that is the, where are we, brightness true. And we've got the effect list, and we can change the effects on here. So what we can do now is, I've changed that to fade in and out, so that started pulsating. I'm gonna change one other thing using MQTT, browser, I'm just going to change this transition value to 50 and publish that. Okay, so um, now you've seen that I've changed that. And when I did that, we had the effect of solid, the transition 50 and the brightness at 255. And Home Assistant has now picked that up. And that is because we were using this state topic. So we've sent the command from somewhere else and Home Assistant has picked up that change in state. Anyway, now that we've got this in here, we can change the color and it transitions fairly quickly because we've set that transition value to 50 milliseconds. We can set the white value all the way up. We can turn the brightness down and we can change the effect. So that's my primer on MQTT. I hope that that's helped you to understand MQTT and the implications that it has for home automation. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Leave a comment down below if you've got any questions or tell me what you want to use MQTT to control. And please, if you haven't already, consider subscribing. If you do hit subscribe, make sure you hit that bell icon so you get a notification when I release new videos like this one. Lastly, if you'd like to help support the channel, I've now included a buy me a coffee link down in the video description below. Any contributions received through the buy me a coffee link go towards helping me to make better content for you and hopefully answering those home automation questions that you have in your environment. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.